Coming up on ECG, Overwatch League signs its first female player. Mystery Marvel movie. More movement on the in-game loot crate front. Ubisoft is going uber soft. Oh, that was good. All this and more coming up on the East Coast Geek Podcast. Welcome to episode 124 of the East Coast Geek Podcast for February 16th, 2018, where we bring you all the latest news on movies, comics, and gaming. I'm your host, Jeremy, and with me, as always, is the ever-surprising and ever-evolving intro writer, Opu. How you doing, bud? Pretty good. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that like really made sense, but you know my two favorite things are alliteration and puns, so... I, yeah, I don't know, I, and and it's contrary to actually the position of that article. So it'll be interesting when we get to it, and you'll be like, "Oh, maybe that's not so bad after all." So uh, uh, no, it's always it's here's the thing with Ubisoft: it's either bad or less bad. It's never okay. Uh, I'm hoping this is a new chapter. I really am. Eh. We'll we'll get to it. You'll see. So uh, I guess up front. Uh, you know, we've been doing our our same things, I think. Uh, I don't know what you did last weekend after we did the show. When did we do the show? Uh, do we do it okay, on Sunday? Okay, so... I don't know. But last weekend <laughs> I spent pretty much all the time reading because I've got a massive backlog of books I'm trying to read. So I'm trying to rush through as many of them as possible. You better hurry up. Especially because I keep adding more to a list. <laughs> um, this week, though, I forgot that I had pre-ordered a couple of... Uh, movies isn't that so great when lot... you forget that you pre-ordered things and they just show up and it's not like... when you're on a budget and i'm like oh my god i just lost oh no bucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh you get out hey, i it's forgot been I'm like... i forgot that the pre-order they don't take certain places don't take the money till it's time so yeah, yeah everything exactly. hits at once which is good when you're broke and you're wanting to pre-order a bunch of stuff right then yeah until when it when it starts getting here you're like okay man i've got like 50 bucks to make it through the next two weeks. Oh, wait, half of it just left in pre-orders I forgot about. <laughs> Never mind. I'm sure I've got enough pennies going around. <sighs> Great. So, um, but, the, but the two movies I got was the live-action Blade of the Immortal, which I haven't watched yet, and Pokemon, I Choose You. The, the new movie, right? Yeah, yeah. So I watched it, and that six, three or four-part miniseries, that po- Pokemon special miniseries, was yeah. vastly superior. Really? Yes. Um, this Ash is actually smarter than the normal Ash we have. Wait, does he actually uh, win? Yeah, he actually does legitimately win his fights. Um, the animation is did really he w- nice. Wait, did he win a tournament? No, he didn't win a oh, tournament. Okay. He didn't get that far. He, All he right. was... I was, I was, I was worried there for a second they were, like, going outside the mold, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, it, was, it was still that Ash Saves the Day kind of oh, okay. plot, but it did show him in a montage actually winning fights. However, he only had three Pokemon, and it also doesn't kind of make sense in a way, unless he just spammed Pikachu the entire time, because he has... His, the three Pokemon he gets, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you the first two. He gets Pikachu and he gets Caterpie. Nice. However, Caterpie doesn't evolve until after the montage. and Caterpie used String Shot. It was yes, super Yes, actually, effective. Caterpie used String Shot against him. Oh, excellent. And wrapped Ash up, and then Ash got Pikachu to go, uh, go zap yeah. him. So he actually <laughs> fought and captured Caterpie like he's supposed to, instead of just throwing a Pokeball and getting lucky. Nice. And let's see, but the um, you know there was a lot of really nice parts to it. Like I said, the animation was good. The battles were intense and energetic. Um, let's see. Yep. So Erica, is, he he fights Erica and her Pokemon. I had to confirm this. I were were in the low or high, what well, low thirties, high twenties, kind of twenty four to twenty nine. Okay. In Pokemon okay. Red, Green, and Blue. Ash beats her with just Pikachu, which is fine. But then he, why does he have his Caterpie at like almost level, potentially almost level 30? If he's this high in fighting for badges, why is it still Caterpie? Oh, and I can... over the course of like half, a, half an hour in, in the movie, it evolves from Caterpie 
to Butterfree. But but you do that so that you know it gets the moves earlier, right? Isn't that the trick? Yes, except <laughs> for when it's Caterpie. <laughs> it's 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 certain bug types because yeah they don't get anything those, until it's yeah because because they the the point of those are they're supposed to be like um, the training wheels for you early right. on because they evolve fast so you get a couple of decent attacks early on well and then listen, later on obviously their powers aren't as great as the end tier Pokemon that you can receive ashes are a crutch ashes crap anyways because he got Pikachu at level one and nobody does that. Uh, Pokemon Yellow. I get it. Oh, well. Yeah, but that was done because of the the fandom. Yeah. Time to revitalize my Pokemon Go. Yeah, every now and then. Uh, I heard the raids, and they've been announcing, uh, or releasing a bunch of the new uh, Pokemon throughout the ball. Not new, but you know what I mean. They're starting mm -hmm. to expand again, so. It might be worth it. I pull it out every now and then and, and play, so. All right, uh. If I ever went anywhere. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, if you want, like, a really good, that shows more of a character arc, stick with the Pokemon, that Pokemon miniseries. Um, but this was pretty decent. <laughs> well, let me tell I mean, you. Oh, go ahead. That's all. That's all. I'm sorry. That's all I got. No, okay. That's fine. Well, let me tell you, I uh, I started playing the Switch again since uh, mm -hmm. I have it here with me. And the kids don't. The kids aren't hogging it. <laughs> Uh, I started playing. Me? I started playing uh, Breath of the Wild again, and man, I am deep back into it. I am loving a lot of the things about it and hating the horses. That's pretty much the only thing I really hate are the horses. The, well, uh, here's here's the, here's the thing: the horse controls. If they were in an area like in Ocarina of Time, just the, the massive flat Hyrule field, they'd be perfect. But in this one, not only do you have a bunch of trees that could be a minor nuisance, even though they kind of move out of the way of them, but there's too much vertical space. You know what I'm saying? Well, even and if the I horse hit, can't. Even if I hit a little like dip that's like this much space between, it like stops and rears, and it's like, why? You should be able to just hop up that, right? Yeah, it just like stops, and it's like eh, it shouldn't be like that. So. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't think. I, well, here's the thing. I only did it the first couple, of, only for a couple of side quests, and just for some rare ones to get. Uh, but I never used the horses because, again, I think the game is too vertical. You need to you need to glide all the time. Yeah, that uh, it's, I'm, it's hard to. I'm slowly figuring that out and starting to walk yeah. a lot more. And I got my first coup de gras kill. I snuck up on something that was uh, not looking at me and. All of a sudden, I got a button prompt that said uh, sneak attack, and I was like, "Yes, yes, please! I uh, want to yes, be a rogue." Absolutely. Why isn't Zelda? Or why is why isn't Zelda? Why isn't Link a rogue in the first place? It's not like most of these things he could just fight face first, anyways. So, well, uh, this I mean, this not is this the, game. one of the first. Yeah, not, yeah, in, not this in this game. game. This game, You're you cannot brute force your way through fights, unfortunately, like you could in the others. He Which, is not a. Which makes me wonder how how hard the master mode is because I've heard that people said that you don't see anything lower than a uh, uh, blue uh, moblin as mm -hmm. far as difficulty, and the other things are amped up. They're like uh, black skinned or whatever, and uh, and it it's really tough. And they said most of the time when you're starting the master, you're like avoiding fights like the plague, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Because there's a lot of times that you run into things early in that sometimes you can't avoid. So, yeah, you um, sometimes discretion is the better part of val valor in that in that game, and you're go you'll learn that as you go. I'm starting to learn to pick my fights, trying to get better with the bow. So, so I can uh, the bow is going to help. Um, Every now and then I get lucky and explode a whole camp full of them. I had this one. <laughs> I came across this one that was on a riverbank, a little camp, and I was like. Mm -hmm. They've got barrels around them, and that uh, it's sloping towards them. So I pulled out the uh, the round bomb and tossed it and let it roll down the hill. It showed up next to them. They all got they all got uh, alerted, and I blew it up, and they all went flying. It was great. <laughs> let me let me tell you those the once you figure out use of those specials, you won't need as many weapons anymore. Between between the magnetic thing, and you will find a ton of stuff to lift. Uh, the time stop. Freaking time stop is an absolute game breaker. With that one, it turns any fights, even like the harder level fights, into jokes. It, yeah, 
some of the more powerful opponents, um, like I told you off camera, was it will only last for two or three seconds, but that's more than enough for you to rake up some significant damage considering the weapons you've got, or at least to set yourself up or to give you breather to re strategize. Right. So, I, yeah, I, I absolutely adore this game. Well, I'm looking forward to more on it, and it looks great on on my, my 4K TV, even though it's only putting out at 1080. It looks really amazing. The art style they, they took with it, which is, uh, I want to say it's more of a uh, harder polygonal type art instead of them being nice and smooth characters. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, it looks like the scenery where it's a little harder harder edges and stuff on the, the characters. Which is nice. I mean, the the outlining of the character's face and all that, you get good expressions from it, stuff like that. But it doesn't. It's not jarring. The whole world looks that way, so it's not mm -hmm. taking you out of it. Um, yeah. Kind of like going from Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask to uh, the Wind Waker, which almost was the end of my my Legend of Zelda career because I was so mad at the way it looked. And then I Listen, played it man, and I was man. like. This is the best Zelda game ever. <laughs> that so. one is where Link has the most personality. A lot of personality does show through in this game when he's like making food. Have you worked on your food prep yet? I've started. Yeah, I've started putting things in. I started killing me... birds and killing uh, goats and stuff. So. Oh, yeah. Have you ridden any uh, other animals besides horses yet? You can ride other animals besides yeah, you horses. You can ride the bear. The, you can ride the horses. Okay. I haven't, I haven't seen uh, a bear yet. Well, you, you you have you left the plateau? Uh, I just started going out towards. Uh, I went to Kakariko and then I went to okay. uh, Hateno. So you know that there's always uh, skeleton villain uh, monsters in the game, right? Well, they have skeleton horses. Oh, really? Oh, that'd be yes. awesome. And yes, you can ride them. Awesome. Spoilers. Awesome. S uh, s slight spoiler, but yes, you can ride it. Great. Uh, All right. Well. Uh, the other things I got in the banter here, uh, free weekends for both Overwatch and Rainbow Six Siege. So here's your chance, Mitch. You can download it for the PC so you can get ready when uh, when you finally get it there. Because yeah. uh, then you won't have to uh, wait, do anything This weekend? Update. Yeah, it's this weekend. Both of them uh, are this well, weekend. Our weekends are taken up. Well, I just said you can download the files so they're there. Eh. <laughs> uh, it's also There's also a Lunar, uh, Lunar New Year uh, sale on Steam right now. It's minor. It's not really a high key sale like they usually are, but uh, they're there. So uh, yeah, check those well, I out. Gotta, I do not need to check this out. I'm not talking about you. There's other people besides us doing this show. Yeah, well, I'm already <laughs> looking. I'm already looking through my uh, wish list right now. Oh, I was amazed. Hollow Knight's only like nine seventy nine, but I really want to wait to get that on the Switch when it comes out because it's coming out springtime. Legacy of Cain Defiance is ninety seven cent. Wow, Legacy of How can you Legacy of Cain? You're talking like the old the uh, yeah the Cain game, yeah. right? Yeah, oh, old, the old Soul Reaver games. Yeah, oh man, that's great. Uh, Black Panther was released uh, today. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. first showings were last night, and uh, it's enjoying a ninety seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes and seventy five percent audience score, which is still pretty solid. Yeah, uh, I. I'm curious as to how many of those are slanted, but uh, uh, I heard I heard if you I'm, slant against them on the on the main reviews that you know certain nasty terms are being thrown around, which is garbage. If you don't like a movie, you don't like a movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I can't wait to see it. I was excited when I heard about it. I was like, "Holy crap, we're gonna see that, and we're gonna see the Batman listen, of the Marvel universe." <laughs> I yeah, love Batman. Listen, I'm pumped. I'm, I'm just pumped in general right now for both. Um, I've Black heard Panther and Infinity War. The Infinity War is what I'm pumped yeah. for. Yeah, uh, we're we're I, going to see that. Me and me and Christopher. So I, yeah, I got I got to figure out. Like I'm going to just have to bite the bullet and go by myself and see it because I I take my my wife and my daughter, but my daughter is, refuses to catch up on the movies. Every time I put one on, she's she like, just "Oh, I need a bottle. Up. Oh, it's nap time for me." What a child. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I have heard that Michael B. Jordan's villain portrayal is second to almost none in the Marvel Universe, which sounds amazing. Apparently he can't play a good guy very well, but man, can he play a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, yeah, that's that's top on my list too. If I don't get to see it as soon as I can get it 
get my hands on it digitally or uh, otherwise, I'll take a, take a look at it. Which, I still haven't watched Guardians of the Galaxy 2, but I'm kind of waiting for the wife because she liked the first one, so... Uh, we said we'd watch the second one together and get the kids I, involved. I really, so. I, uh, I really enjoyed the second one. So I've got to see Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, I can't wait for that either. And, uh, you know, we've seen the trailer for Ant-Man and Wasp. Ant-Man and it looks Wasp, great. Yeah. So, all oh, right. Um, do you have this in the notes real quick? A last, kind of a last minute thing. That, uh, the Incredibles trailer. Did we just, are we discussing that today? Oh, no, we're not. I didn't throw it in here. Okay, so last minute, real quick. Uh, did you check it check it out? Yes, I did watch it. I thought okay, it was yeah, hilarious. Uh, it was amazing. Yes, it looks great. Yes, um, that's that's all I'm going to say right now. Yeah, I don't I don't really want to I don't really want to spoil anything. Make sure you see it, and maybe we'll talk more about it next week because uh, we got to see our first multi powered superhero. So, <clears throat> which I mean, hopefully everybody watched the. The shorts that came along with the original Incredibles, where right. you got to see what the babysitter had to go through. <laughs> yeah, and they're, they're building on that. And uh, 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 the missus was amazing. And she's running mm-hmm. around doing things too, and trying to make things happen. So it, it was a really good, a really good teaser. It's a minute and a half long or so. So definitely worth the watch. But we won't spoil that. And uh, the last thing, uh, Sea of Thieves is doing a uh, a. Uh, open stress test that you can get into as long as you log into and sign up on the Xbox Insider app on either the Xbox or the PC in Windows 10, Uh, specifically Windows 10. Um, All you have to do is go in there, sign up for it, and they should give you access to it, which uh, we'll be playing right after the show as soon as we get done with this uh, slog fest of notes that I've expanded on on pretty much every single one of them. So uh, let's go ahead and hit that right now. How does that sound? Let's do it. Nope, this one. (laughs) Alright, pictures. Uh, Disney streaming details. Uh, We found out a little more details on it. uh, It won't be here until about... They're assuming about late 2019, which I guess for them to get everything built up and straightened out, maybe... Uh, I probably think they'll try and launch it earlier in the year, vice later in the year. Uh, They want to do it cheaper than Netflix and Hulu because they know that they have a lack of content to compete with things like Netflix and Hulu, plus they own two-thirds of, well, they will own two-thirds of Hulu here soon. Uh, The important part to take away from it is all Marvel, Star Wars, and Disney movies will be available on the service as long as they are PG-13 and below. Um... So, the Runaways stuff on Hulu is going to stay there. The Netflix series are going to stay there. They are, they have no intentions of taking them away from Netflix because they have that delivery of a uh, more adult audience uh, characters. Uh, that's it's that's a good thing. That's definitely a good thing. But they know where their uh, they know where Netflix has uh, got their uh, bread buttered. Uh, Bob Iger actually went on the record saying that Netflix knows what they're doing. They have a huge presence, and we would be stupid to walk away from that deal. Um, other than that, uh, TV shows will probably be on there as well. And I saw, while I was looking for, through this Disney thing, I found another article that mentioned uh, that Viacom has also announced that their, their stuff is... Uh, they're going to hit a streaming service sometime next year as well. Uh, so... That includes Spongebob and all those other cartoons and whatever else is published through Viacom. Uh, and that's about it for that one. This this is kind of a down and dirty. I said we'd throw some things in here. Uh, you figure it's probably going to be 5 to $8 is probably a safe guess on what you, they'll charge for Disney. Because, you know, kids will probably so, watch it more. Adults will watch the ones they like and then they'll, they'll keep up with the things they want to watch. So, yeah. I mean, so, I know it's already something that I need to tell the wife to put in the bill book, so. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but well, I mean, we still got it till next year for it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really hoping that they lean towards more of a Hulu as opposed to a Netflix because I want to, I don't want to have to wait a couple of years for the new DuckTales, for example, to, you know, a day or two, like, and then release it on there. 
episode by episode. That's interesting. I don't think they've said anything about that yet. Um, that that's really not a bad idea for them to do, though. And I, yeah, that that would definitely make more sense to do it that way. Uh, it's it's more immediate content delivery, and it could be a legitimization to maybe put it on the higher end of the low end of uh, of uh, a fee. You know what I mean? Squeeze a couple yeah. more bucks out of there because you're going to get it the next day after it's aired on Disney XD or whatever. So right. that that's not and, a bad idea. Well, and here's the other thing. Disney XD is not the best at having a good schedule. Yeah. I remember, I mean, with Gravity Falls, as great as that show is, they would never, like, re- they never really gave it, like, a solid set in stone schedule. I'd always find it just randomly. Right on on online um not online on the channel it's like but it was airing at this time the other day you know it was like right. whenever so I would absolutely love that if they would if they would uh release them a day or two or a week after that and you know and you could I mean there's a ton of ways you could do it because Crunchyroll and Funimation for anime they have stuff that uh, gets released at the same time. Like they'll upload the episodes at the same time, or some wait later. So, I mean, knowing Disney, they could even do that. Like, oh well, if you want the premium, it gets released the moment it's released on TV, right? Or if you want a lower tier, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that, but, yeah, they haven't they haven't specified whether they're going to do that. That it's a it's an idea they should consider though, yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's just it's just um, that one more thing that you know people people would want. You're not the only one, I'm sure. Oh yeah, no, no, um, definitely not. Because I like to keep up with shows, but I don't. I, I'm not going to get TV. Yeah, I'm, yeah. You know, I don't like log in, having to log into like YouTube and Netflix and then Hulu and blah blah blah. Like I have to do with games, but I mean, I, th- I guess right now that's the way it's going to go until somebody makes like a hub thing, which you can autom- you know, switch through them easily. A little more easily than there maybe are, on the computer. Or there are some ways to do that. Uh, the Chromecast app does that. It'll actually log you into all your accounts, and then if you uh-huh. want to watch something, you punch it in, see if it's on one of the things you have, and then it'll put it up on the screen. Uh, I think the Roku and, players do it too. I'm not okay, sure. so well, there, yeah, there are well, devices fair, and apps that yeah. are starting to do it. Okay, well, to be fair, I also only watch TV through pretty much upstairs on my PS3. Oh. No. Gross. So my, my Xbox One's a little, little f- more advanced on going through stuff than the PS3 is, you know. Yeah, I got you. But I prefer using those to play games when I can. Right. So, but no, I'm, I'm glad to hear this. I'm glad that they're not just trying to shut Netflix out at least to begin with. Right. Um, especially I... since Netflix really did, you know, help them out a lot by. Showing them that they can do a solid TV series or several, and I don't think that I don't think that uh, Disney has stated that they have any intentions of using the platform as a development for new shows. And mm-hmm. I know that can evolve over time because Netflix never intended yeah. it, Hulu never intended it, and both of them are in business of developing TV shows now. Yeah. Which uh, back when they were in- conceived or conceived, they. Uh, they weren't. They weren't ever going to be that. They were just going to be a delivery service. Uh, Netflix mm-hmm. being a, hey, instead of getting the disc, here's a digital format of it. So even though they did start with disc, well, that's what I'm saying. They it yeah. it was in in in. Uh, no, they, 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 I mean, of, I'm agree with you. They did involve. A, and yeah. here's the thing, though. Unlike those, Disney already produces shows and TV, so they don't necessarily have to use this as their only venue because right. they make a ton of movies. Right, you know, they make TV shows and stuff. So still, they're going to produce original content, but they're not going to do it just for the streaming service. All right, well, at let's... least not at this point. But you know, obviously, whatever's going to make them the most money. All right, well, I'm pretty uh, sure uh, Netflix gave this uh, next article its first start. Right? Wasn't that a Netflix launched thing, or was it something actually that it was like Kickstarter? That? Oh, was it Kickstarter? I'm pretty sure. Come. Kung Fury, spoiler alert, everybody, we're about to talk about Kung Fury. Uh, it was a Kickstarter first and foremost. All right, go ahead. You can you can take this one okay. since you already spoiled so, it. All right, so Fastbender is to star in the Kung Fury sequel. 
Is it like did they announce it's a legit sequel or? Is yes, it... they they okay, announced. So there's there's the second bullet is. Uh... All right, just wanted to make sure before I get into all this. All right, so Fassbender will star in David Sandberg's action comedy Kung Fury, which Sandberg will also star in and produce under his Laser Unicorns banner, which you can see <laughs> Kung Fury on YouTube. YouTube, yeah, it's Laser. up there. Yeah. So, banner alongside Fassbender, David Hassel Hasselhoff, Baywatch, Knight Rider. Oh, never mind. I better not say that. Um, will also join the cast following his role in the original short film Kung Fury, which was a was. Which was a Kickstarter record-breaking success. Um, was selected the, for the Cannes yeah, director. Uh, that, that's a weird... That's like a really run-on sentence. Yeah, Was selected is. for can, the, the K-9's director's Fortnite. How you like that, Greg? Are you cringing? <laughs> and has gained over 40 million views worldwide. The feature, which will be a sequel to the original short, is Lensing the Summer. Hmm. Uh, they mean, summer, I'm yeah, sure. they're recording Whatever. it this summer. Yep. Uh, uh, it's not. Oh, there you I'll, go. I'll go ahead. Born. It's 1985, the best year ever, because I was born then. Miami is kept safe under the watchful eye of Kung Fury, the greatest damn cop of all time. Kung Fury's Thunder Cops are the ultimate police force assembled from across history to defeat the villainous, the villainous Kung Fury, Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler. I'm sorry, <laughs> I did not mean to mispronounce that one. After the tragic death of a Thundercop causes the group to disband, a mysterious villain emerges from the shadows to aid in the Fury's quest to attain the ultimate weapon. Kung Fury must travel space and time to save his friends, defend the prestigious Miami Kung Fu Academy, and defeat evil once for all. I'm sorry, I'm just imagining this in my head based <laughs> off of the original, and it's making me laugh because I can absolutely envision this plot, and it's hilarious and awesome. Um, the last thing's a fluff about Fastbender, so. Fastbender, who cares? He's a two time Academy Award winner in anime and all this stuff. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, he was he was actually pretty decent in um, the first freaking. Uh, trying to think. I'm trying to think. The prequel. Assassin's Creed movie? No, the prequel to Alien. Um, uh, Prometheus. Prometheus. Okay. He was actually pretty good, and then he redid his role, or restarred. Well, whatever the word is, I'm trying to. It's a re something word. Uh, he was also he reprised his role in Alien Covenant. Man, struggling for words today. Uh, all right. So uh, that sounds awesome. It's gonna be a full feature length movie, which is even better because that was the most ridiculous, amazing thirty minute film ever. <laughs> It was so great. So I was like, I had no idea. I didn't even catch on to it right away. It was something <laughs> that I think I saw maybe a year later on Netflix. So, so, so here's here, so here's the thing with Kung Fury, is it, it's just thirty minutes. So, do you think for these people that don't know Kung, Kung Fury, which I guess they wouldn't go see Kung Fury two for it, but do you think they would put that as like a short or something at the beginning so people understand what's going on <laughs> or? That would but be did interesting. Did you like cut it up as like the uh, flashbacks? <laughs> kind of like a flashback at the beginning to recap. A recap is what. Yeah, what yeah. exactly I'm looking for. Maybe um, maybe they could do that. That'd be interesting. That would be a an interesting use of the previous material. Yeah, and 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 I mean, don't clean. Even though it it looks good, you know, it'd be, even though it looks bad on purpose because it's supposed to be '80s. Um, I'm hoping. don't clean it up. Like, don't change anything. Just like slice it up as you need it, and do it as like a montage flat flashback recap or or whatever. I'm kind of hoping they mean... don't change too much of the cinematography for the sequel either. I kind of want it to be a crappy '80s movie. Yeah. Oh, because yeah, everything want, looks yeah. too good in in movies anymore. This is already a farce. It needs mm -hmm. to continue it, not not clean it up. It doesn't need to be a a triple a film you know right and i think well you said that the original creator of kung fury is going to reappear in it yeah he's, and he's writing it right yeah he's re he's reprising he's also he's producing i don't know if he's writing it okay. it doesn't say if he's writing it so if you guys want to see any so um so while this hasn't come out yet kung fury 2 if you need something that has the same feel 
watch uh, what is it called? Freedom Force Five. Oh on, yeah. On Netflix and watch Italian Spider Man on YouTube. Oh my god. Have you seen that? <laughs> no, I've heard about it though. <laughs> you it's gotta watch I, it. Yeah, I'll take a look. I've only been recently introduced to One Punch Stan, so Oh yeah, I'm you, sure and you gotta watch Nine Piece stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta see all that stuff, but um, I mean, there's, it's just the most absurd scenes. Like one person, like a chick, there's a there's a lady that wants a cigarette, right? And so a guy pulls out a pistol, puts a cigarette in there, and shoots her in the face, <laughs> and it's, she's got the cigarette in her mouth, and it's lit. <laughs> and it's lit. Or somebody else like took, uh, they took a they took like a, uh, a f- oh this happens in Kung Fury right where he takes the 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 phone and puts the gun up to it and, and shoots, shoots everybody. Phone. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's oh my god, it's it's bad eighties movie all over it, but it's fine. It's it's great. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like a more obscu- uh, uh, insane last action hero. Yeah, oh man, last action hero was great. That was one of my favorite movies growing up. I used that to watch is that all really the time. unappreciated. Oh, it really it's is. A really unappreciated film for sure. All right, so uh, you want to you want to go I, ahead and take the uh, the next one too? Yeah, I'll, I'll take the next one too. So. I think they should just cancel all the X-Men movie coming up and Well, listen, um depending on what this one is, I might I might be interested in. It. So, a mystery X-Men movie is supposedly in the works with the direct, the director of Deadpool and Brian Michael Bendis. The working title is 143. Now, when I first saw the 143 title, I was like, maybe they're doing uh the decimation decimation arc, you know, with no more mutants and everything until I remembered, oh, the remaining mutants was 198, not 143. But some people have thrown out theories of what it could be. One theory is Uncanny X-Men number 143, which was a Christmas set horror comic with Kitty Pride in the X-Mansion when a demon named Nagari, I mean, I've never heard that pronounced, so I don't know if that's wrong or sure. not. And it's an alien name. I'm not going to so, correct you. Yeah. Um, attack. Uh, the comic was created by Chris Claremont and John uh, Bourne, Brian, Burn, Burn, Bjorn, um, in their acclaimed room. Now, I've read this comic. It's actually really good. She's the only one in the X-Mansion. And this demon, or, or whatever the creature was, um, I thought it was part of the the brood or whatever. But anyway, so it attacks. Basically, it looks like a an alien. For lack of a better term, it looked like an alien. It attacked her, and it could kind of hurt her, if I remember correctly, because it's been a while. It could actually kind of hurt her, even when she was phased. Hmm. So she was trying to dodge it throughout the mansion, like phasing through the walls. And this is back when her powers were really low tier compared to now. Um, I think, or she wasn't as confident in her abilities. And so she, this really inexperienced teenage girl... Um, you know, it's trying to survive just one night. You know, and she doesn't... And normally, you'd be like, oh, well, you're the, in the X-Men. So, call in Wolverine and Cyclops and Colossus and Storm and just sit back and munch on the popcorn. Right. But unable to contact anybody. So, it's like... From, to me, that seems like it's even a scarier situation where, like, oh, all the superpowered friends that could take care of this in, like, half a second aren't available and there's no way for me to reach them. Right. Um... So yeah, so I think that it would be so uh, that kind of superhero horror theme movie would really be really neat. I know they're coming out with the new mutants, which is supposed to be kind of a horror. A horror yeah, movie. I was I was gonna say, well, horror, horror TV show, right? Or was it a movie? Uh, or whatever it is. No, uh, it's a movie. That's right? the gifted. Oh, the gifted new yeah. mutants. Is My bad. Um, but no, th- this where like you have a superpowered individual and they're being hunted by an alien, by a creature or whatever. It just, it seems interesting, you know? Right. So one of the others is the New Mutants uh, 143 by Grant Morrison and Chris Bocciolo could also be more relevant as it features Wolverine, Cyclops, and the Thief Phantom X, which I don't really like as a character, breaking into the Weapon Plus Project's base of operations called The World, where they learn the origin of the Weapon X Project that created Wolverine and his predecessors, including Captain America. This feels to me personally like it'd be closer to what they probably Fox tried to do. Want. Yeah. However, now that I just think about it, um, they've already done this kind of twice already. There's 
in Logan, they had the kind of the weapon program with all the kids. Right. And in um, X Men Origins Wolverine. Obviously, he didn't learn as much about the program as he does in this story arc because Phantom X is part of the weapon system, I believe. Um, but with it discussing Captain America, if this this would actually be a neat, like, small merger into the Disney MCU and the Fox verse. Or even a semi-reboot, because it would be introducing your new screen at that point. Right. So, what do you think? I think it would be very interesting to see the Kitty Pride thing. Um, I'm kind of... Growing up, I've watched a ton of movies, and some of the best ones that I've watched is where it has a limited cast. Yeah. So, if you have... Kitty Pride versus a demon, and they're playing tricks on her the whole time, and it's like a big mind game. I think that would pre- be pretty amazing. It would be really yeah, now, interesting to see. Yeah, and so in the comic, it's just one, so it's a cat and mouse type of game with right. her trying to go through, and like everything is like she tricks it into going into the danger room, all this stuff. So, um, and I, I absolutely agree. I think going for a, a, the smaller your cast is the more story arc and characterization each of those characters right. gets. Right. That's why things like Beast Wars, because they couldn't at the time with the CGI, they could not um, show that many characters on screen. They were able to do more character motivated stories in arcs. And that's why Beast Wars is remembered as one of the best TV shows to come out of Transformers <laughs> series. Um, and, you know, with not only that, but as a movie, it'd be relatively lower budget and her powers aren't necessarily that flashy so they wouldn't be that expensive right um and so i think it would be like a kind of a low risk high risk type of thing and it's something we really haven't seen yet where like you know most of the hero movies are where the heroes are very powerful they you know they, they have some mysteries or whatever the, and and that's it. Kind of goes back to what I've said before, and I agreed with what I heard on another podcast. It's the best way to put it. The reason why Marvel is so successful is they figured out how to make a movie about a robbery, and add superheroes to it. Yep. They figured out how to make a bank heist and have superheroes in it. They figured out how to make uh, a, a an espionage movie with superheroes in it. Mm-hmm. Amazingly, they do really well with taking a concept. And adding the superheroes to it instead of making it a, a comic book movie, they're making yes. it something else and putting those characters in in that place. So they they do a really good job of developing that. And depending on you know if Disney can get their hands into this and uh, well not Disney but Marvel itself get their hands into it, then maybe maybe this could be a turning point. Uh, it's the age of B characters, anyways, starting back from Iron Man. Yeah, I, you're absolutely right. Kitty, yes, um, Kitty Pride is not one of the main up and front characters early in in the X Men, but she grows into a role. And in this, it would be a great start to say, "Hey, here's one of the here's one of the new X Men, Kitty Pride. She's been around before, and you know, at least you and I know who she is. But mm-hmm. the greater the greater people just know her as some chick that well, they don't even know it was her that phased through the wall in the mansion in the first X was the first X Men movie or the second one." Second, it was second, the second one. Second one, right? Because the uh, yeah. that's when Wolverine started clawing people. Yeah, and and we got to it. see like an actual berserker race. <laughs> that was such a cool fucking moment. Oh my goodness! I want to see <laughs> God, that was. You know what? I I, I, I rag <laughs> on the X Men movies a lot. I mean, a lot. But when they nail it, they absolutely nail it. And Hugh Jackman, oh my goodness, he was so good at that scene. And Logan, oh, the ending scene when he goes berserking. Oh, yeah. Oh man. So, anyways, <laughs> no. So, yeah. So, and and again, at any other point, Kitty Pride's powers are an absolute game breaker. She's able to phase through just about anything short of energy, and like adamant, like well, she can phase through it, but it actually will hurt her because it's such a dense material. Right. You know, and usually it's as long as she can hold her breath, she can phase through it. Uh, in the Ultimate comic, she learned how to do the opposite and increase her density to give her like a low level super strength. I don't think she's ever done that here. She's, uh, it's, but she has learned to phase other things. And so, at any other point in her career, this wouldn't be a this wouldn't be a story because she would grab the thing, phase it halfway through, 
one of the uh, denser metals, and she may have even tried it in this uh, story. I don't remember, but she would have phased it through like the danger room's walls, which are practically indestructible. And that's the end of it. Wait for yeah. Cyclops to come home or Gambit to come home, and it's done with. Yeah, I was gonna say we've seen enough of Wolverine and Cyclops. Not not that I don't want to see more Wolverine, uh, but you know, start start highlighting some of these other characters because there are what hundreds of X Men, right? There are, well, again, even with the decimation that happened in the comics, which, again, that's the inaccurate term, but it sounds cool, um, there was still uh, almost 200 characters. They, they have so plenty. They have, they have a few thousand mutant characters, not just yeah, X-Men. I meant mutant, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah, so I so said, I think this would be totally cool, and even at the end, when she thinks she's killed it, or whatever, like in any horror, classic the, horror film, and the, the monster twist. pops back up. Yeah, the it twist. pops back up, and then like over her shoulder, when it's starting to get up, you see like an optic blast just take its head off. They'd be like, what did you do, Kitty? <laughs> or a lightning bolt come down? I've been, How I, cool would that be? as I've grown older, I've become more and more a fan of the unhappy ending in a horror horror movie. Well, this is uh, a hero film, so it yeah, I know, I know. Happy. Yeah. It, well, yeah, I mean, it, it can so my, I think I'm appreciate not necessarily downer endings, but bittersweet endings. Uh, where like the day seen, is saved, but at heavy losses. Have you ever seen the skeleton key? Yes. That ending is probably one of my favorites. Uh, if you haven't watched it, definitely go check it out. But it doesn't exactly end I the did. way. I saw it in theaters. I didn't see it in theaters. I uh, I saw it. I saw it later on DVD, but. Totally worth it. It was a it was a great ending. So, hey everybody, showing up. Uh, hey, look, it's my son Chris and my mother in law. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's go ahead and hit this next thing. Uh, oh, which means we're gonna go to this. Yay! Gonna go chase after uh, Doctor Wiley. All right, uh, Overwatch League gains its first female pro player. The player, Gaguri, has joined the Shanghai Dragons. Uh, if you missed out on last week's show, uh, they, uh, they finished dead last. So they're in need of uh, the most help. So uh, should I make an awful joke here? No, 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 you can, you can no, wait. No, no. Okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead. You I was going to say... So that means they can't get any worse, right? Right. Oh, man. Uh, the Chinese team has added four Korean players to its lineup, most notably 19-year-old Kim Gregory Seon, who has become the league's first female player. Uh, Gregory is well-known in Overwatch circles for her play with the character Zarya, which I really hate that character. Uh, when she was just 16 years old, her win rate with the character was so high that other players accused her of cheating, and she was forced to perform on a live stream to prove that she was actually as good as she seemed. Uh, Grigori was previously the first woman to play in Apex, a Korean league that served as the game's premier competition prior uh, to the launch of the Blizzard's Overwatch League. Uh, the lack of women among the 12 teams in the league has been one of the major talking points ahead of the or heading into the beginning of the Overwatch League, uh, but uh, apparently they're starting to uh, uh, break into that which is it's fine there are there are a, a plenty of uh female players throughout the world there was a attached to this article was also a uh, mention about the first female to win a StarCraft 2 tournament uh within the last month or two I think uh which which is awesome uh she was I think she was either British or something like that which is amazing cuz she's not Korean <laughs> So because I, they live on, they live on, they live on StarCraft. <laughs> they apparently have a channel in South Korea dedicated to StarCraft. So uh, it's it's that like a religion really over there, cool. right? I would love a channel. Yeah, I've I've heard about it. Uh, Robbie, he's told me about it before from uh, when he was over there. I'll have him check in on it while he's back over there. Um, but uh, oh, yeah, that's. Where did I lose? Okay, no, that that was it. Um, so so they got their first uh, the first female in the league. Maybe maybe this will break in more. Uh, we'll see how she does. 
I guarantee that start of next stage, uh, is that this week? Mm, I think so. Um, well, next that, week. that we'll see. No, wait, we'll wait, wait. The 21st. Next week, I think. Is it? Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, it is the 21st. You're right. So next next week, this is their week off. They just finished. So we'll see. Uh, actually, the first uh, the first night at 9 p.m. Uh, Dallas Fuel versus Shanghai Dragons. We'll see if uh, if that turns around the uh, the Shanghai team's uh, misfortunes uh, after going 0 and 10. That that stinks. That really hurts. Uh, you'd hope. I know it doesn't. It makes me feel good. My team <laughs> won one. I think one and think nine. That was the record. Look at that. One, one and, and nine. nine. <laughs> yeah. So the mayhem. Uh, not to take away from this uh, article or the achievement or whatever, um, has gotten at least a second coach. I think they've added three more players as well. Oh okay. Uh, oh wait, Shanghai. No. Oh, uh, oh, you're mayhem. talking about mayhem. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. That's what you were talking about earlier. I thought you were talking about because I, I didn't read everything in that article because they said they added four Korean players to the team for Shanghai. Oh, I no, thought I you were saying three of them uh, plus a coach or three others plus a coach. So no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> Florida no, mayhem. I'm, I'm, I'm not coach. following the Shanghai. Drive. I'm just following um, the mayhem. The mustard and ketchup team. The mustard and ketchup team. Well, I don't hey, listen, Florida has a big trend with mustard and ketchup because FSU they have they usually have a mustard and ketchup guy that shows up at the games. One guy's it all like painted red, and the other one's painted yellow. Nice, nice. All right, uh, let's uh, let's. So, you got anything else on good, it? Well, or you wanna... real quick, um, Gaguri, good luck. We'll see you. I'll, I'll probably try. I'll check out some uh, Shanghai Dragon games. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> kind of want to root for the underdog now, right? <laughs> well, After... I thought that's why I picked Mayhem because I thought I thought they had no chance. Close. Close and to they no have a chance. Point. What a... yeah. <laughs> Pick the wrong team, damn it. All right, uh US Senators call on the ESRB to take action on the loot the loot boxes. Uh suggest uh the Federal Trade Commission could get involved. Uh Maggie Hassan of the uh uh, 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 Megasan's letter to the ERSB. Yeah, Meg- Megasan's letter to the ESRB. Uh, recently, the World Horth Health World Horth <laughs> World Health Organization classified gaming disorder as a unique condition in its recent draft revision of the Eleventh International Classification of Diseases. Hassan wrote. Uh, while there is a, she also wrote. Uh, uh, while <laughs> while there is a revo- robust debate over whether loot boxes should be considered gambling. The fact that they are both expensive habits and use use similar psychological principles suggests loot boxes should be treated with extra scrutiny. At minimum, the rating system should be done or should denote when loot boxes are utilized in physical copies of electronic games. And the uh, the ESRB's response was, uh, "We received Senator Hassan's letter." and appreciate her confidence in and support of the ESRB rating system. Uh, for more than two decades, we have earned this. The uh, we have earned the trust of parents around the country by helping them make informed decisions about the games their children play. As the industry evolves, so does our rating system, and we will continue to make enhancements to ensure parents continue to be well informed. We will also continue to provide information about additional tools, including parental control guides that will help parents set spending and time limits and block potentially inappropriate games based on the ESRB assigned age rating. Uh, that's a good step in the right direction. Uh, maybe maybe it'll, it'll help curb some of this loot box stuff. And uh, we don't have it in here, but... In light of everything that happened with Battlefront 2, uh, Disney is considering taking away the license for Star Wars from EA, which would be huge to EA's bottom line because they are banking on a bunch of Star Wars titles in the next couple of years. Yeah, so here's... Okay, so let me address this uh, loot box. First of all, I don't... I'm not really a big fan of the government stepping in and micromanaging things. However, the loot boxes 
our problem. They are annoying, to say the least. Well, not to mention, do you have DLC, but then you also have to pay yeah. for loot boxes to get the skins that, man, back in the day, we used to have those built into the game. Yeah. I remember back in the day, you actually unlocked them through legitimate achievements and not just rolling the dice. Oh, look, you got that that that, that skin that you've been wanting. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't like random number things, really. I like... I don't know. I just, it just doesn't feel like you're achieving anything. Like, um... I don't, I don't know, because I had that same frustration with um, Dragon Ball Xeno first, is that if you did all these steps correctly, you might have a 0.1% chance of a special ability dropping, which right. did make you feel like you... It, well, it didn't even really make me feel like I did something, because it just was random, you know? It could have been my first time it dropped, or it could have been my 500th, you know? Yeah. And... I mean, we remember back in the good old days when you had to turn the, the TV dial to Channel 3 that you would just put <laughs> in codes and get half the stuff that they're charging you for now. Game you know? Genie. Or Game a game Genie. You and pay, it's just like... <laughs> Was that the, the earliest loot box? <laughs> um, what, was that? what did that thing run, like 30 or 40 bucks? Something like that. Something like that, yeah. And at least. Game, what was probably... it Ga- Game Shark on the handhelds, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Ah, those so, are the good old days. I yeah. used to hate Earthworm Jim sometimes. Oh, don't, <laughs> don't even get me started on that. <laughs> you're like, you're, you're older now, so like your brain's more developed, so your reaction time should be better. But at the same time, you're not used to those quick t- twitch uh, or even the lag in some of the old games, like Mega Man X. When you, you know, um, Whenever you had like too many characters on screen, yeah, you get that slow on the screen. Yeah. Oh, oh god! And trying to process too much data. Really. Yep. But um, yeah, these loot boxes are an issue. Uh, EA, you know, I can like with Overwatch and stuff. It's a mild in the way best because you do at least legitimately earn coins and stuff, and you do get legitimate. You know, rank ups each time that do give you at least loot boxes. Right. So it's like, okay, they're annoying in Overwatch, but you know, I don't have to spend my money, and they're not actively shoving it in my so, face. So, so my question: buy loot boxes. So my okay. question is, if loot boxes were exclusively only allowed to be unlocked through playing the game, are you okay with that? It depends on what it is. I think you should. I think, well, because if it's if it's all unlocked through gameplay. That technically mm-hmm. fulfills your achievement. I'm playing devil's mm-hmm. advocate here, like really, yeah, really no, hard. You're good. But uh, but yeah, you're you're technically unlocking it through achievement of completing something, uh, whether it be random. The problem is, is that the randomization of those boxes, getting duplicates, really sucks. I understand that. Uh, I've been now, grinding. The division. other thing. <laughs> well, yeah. The, so the other thing is they either have to somehow, which again, Overwatch does pretty okay, is you get coins when it was going to normal duplicate right right so i'm cool with that i'm cool with you like earning coins to be able to go and purchase you know purchase with those in-game coins that you have to earn and not just buy so your problem your problem specifically is being able to to pay more to unlock part of the game that should just be unlocked through playing the game especially one of my big things which isn't necessarily loot boxes i hate pay to win where like oh yeah well you could you could spend 50 hours getting the, the Gundam, or you could just give us 20 bucks now and get it now, and but you're still going to be at such a low level that nobody's going to be able to touch you. Right. You know? And the, these are still, you're at, you know, you're, you've got a level 50 item that you can use right now, but these level 5 people who don't have, one, the knowledge of the game, two, the weaponry to take you down, can't do anything. And that's a massive exaggeration, obviously. Right. Um, but it's, it's those kind of situations that I, I hate so, pay to win. So, how do you feel about Overwatch? So, Overwatch with its skins and its emotes and stuff. I mean, again, it's a mild annoyance to me at best. I do have fun like pressing the button and letting it unlock. But it's like, okay, well, if I get a skin for a character I never play, I don't care. Yeah. But again, it's not shoving the loot box thing in my face like EA was doing. Like, hey, you can unlock this right now, or you can spend another forty thousand hours unlocking. Darth Vader. 
they didn't they didn't lock Mercy behind a paywall. They didn't lock Hanzo right. behind a paywall. That's... You don't lock Darth Vader behind a paywall. Right. That's like opening up. Uh, I don't know, playing a Looney Tunes game, and you have to buy Bugs Bunny. Right. Yeah, and uh, it, it's it's. I, I disagree completely with having to spend more money to do things like that. And yeah. and games that have the ability to slowly unlock those, it's great. The problem is, is when you get higher up in the levels in Overwatch, and once you level up, you get a box, and it gets it's a, it's full of duplicates. Then mm-hmm. what do you do? Then you're mad because you're not your desire sensor is detecting that you want something and giving you crap instead. Yeah. So well, some some games and I don't remember which ones actually have a isolated loot pool where mm-hmm. once you get something it checks it off a list and you no longer see it. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. And I and I thought Overwatch did that. Like, cause you got a duplicate, you got co- you got coins. But, yeah, so you can. Yeah. You can actually, and you use the coins to actually buy the skin that you want, which is kind of nice. Because- and yeah, so I'm I'm cool with that overall. Again, I find loot boxes in general kind of a mild annoyance, but buying skins that don't change gameplay, buying emotes that don't change gameplay, don't give anybody an extra boost. Well, again, it's a mild annoyance. I'm okay with that because you're, even though it doesn't feel as earned as me. Okay, you know, I fought this big monster, I won. Now I get this special skin on top of the crowning victory, whatever. Even, but even better is is in over yeah. a game like Overwatch. The only people that are seeing those skins are other people, and you see mm-hmm. it once if you get a play of the game generated. That is the only time you see it, and it's because of your character's uh, intro when uh, uh, the intro for the for the play of the game. That's when you yeah. see your character. That is the only time. So for probably. A second to one and a half seconds, you see your character skin. Otherwise, you're just looking at maybe their wrists and their their weapon, what it, what it looks like. Yeah. Um. And uh, that I, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm, um, you know, again, that I consider that a mild annoyance. They don't for, they don't shove it down your throat that you need to pay money. Um. I so I'm I'm kind of cool with how Overwatch does it, and games similar to that. Um. I don't like. But the way EA, regardless of if I hated loot boxes or loved them, what EA was doing is absolutely wrong. It was just a kind crime. Greed. And I, I don't mind. I, I think greed is a great inspiration. It, it's a great point of creativity. Well, it but, inspired a community to rise up against a company and have them yeah. change for now. I mean, until those things Oh, no, they, they didn't change. They just tried to sweep stuff under the rug. So yeah. they didn't change anything. They're bringing them back. No, I think I think that's one of your great motivators is, and you know that's I mean you you don't just do something just to do it, you know you you uh, work out so you look good so you get the guy or girl you want or you learn poetry or their habits you know you're always motivated to do something if your motivation is to make more money, that's fine but make more money because you do quality work yeah Witcher three let's bring out Witcher three again it's a great fun game. And I'm willing to give it money and buy it two or three times because it's fun, and they didn't intentionally screw me over. And that Breath and of the that, Wild is great, you know. And that Go goes ahead. into it too. You you spend so much time in development creating multiple skins that you can monetize rather than working on quality gameplay or story. I mean, and the other thing is that eventually the servers are going to shut down for these Battlefront games. Mm-hmm. Just like with that. Marvel Facebook game when they shut down those servers they had to give all these refunds to people yeah because they had spent hundreds of dollars I want a game that no matter what I can always put it in and play and I'm willing to put more money into like buying the Breath of the Wild DLCs or the Witcher Three DLCs or whatever DLCs Shovel Knight DLCs because I can always play that you haven't sold me on De- Shovel Knight yet I keep looking you at it you haven't played it yet. I, I keep looking at it in the in the Switch store, and I just I I don't get it. It <laughs> you have to play it. You, ha- you have to play it. Like you don't get it until you play it. Okay, you don't get it until you play it. Well, I need I need like, tons of tons of uh, Nintendo eShop cards for Christmas. There and that's my other thing. And that's my other thing is release legitimate demos again. Uh, 
there's a there's a filter on the Switch mm-hmm. eShop for games with demos. So and there's oh. there's not a ton of them, but there mm-hmm. are some. So like but, uh, Dragon Quest Builders, I played a demo of, and it's like it makes it made me want to get the game, and it's like this is this was a tool back in the day that was used widely, and now is just thrown away. The best, the best, and closest that we get to on the computers is when, like, what we're about to do after the show, which is why we should wrap this up soon, is uh, playing in a stress test or a beta. Yeah, but see, here's the thing: with the digital age now, what is the reason, aside from like server costs? But if you give them a good demo, like a shovel knight demo, let them play through level one of that. Somebody's going to, a lot of people are going to buy that, and it should, it should cut, it should uh, totally pay for itself. Right, but in this digital day and age, where they don't have to print disc anymore, where they don't have to, you know, make a cartridge with a bunch of short little games on there or whatever, uh, there's no excuse not to give every game a demo, except yeah, but, for the most basic indie teams out there. That, but that was the best thing about the uh, about Nintendo going back to the cartridges, though, is it's so mm-hmm. much cheaper than the discs. The discs were expensive yeah. and destructible. These things yeah. are damn near indestructible and have bitter in it so your children don't eat them. Yeah, and, but, <laughs> but, but I'm saying like right now, digital is even cheaper really, I, as far as I know. It should be. It well, isn't. For, most, for the most I mean, part, the it is what, let me Let me tell you, almost every... Well, no, because I've played a lot, a lot more demos lately. It used to be almost every demo I played, I bought yeah. the digital... Like the, especially the digital version where it's like, oh... Press a button. I own this game now. Now continue this mission. Uh, yeah. Oh, and oh, that used to uh, be and, gr- that used to be great but, with uh, sh- with shareware and and uh, mm-hmm. the demoware from when I used to go to trade shows and stuff. It would be like, yeah, you can just purchase a key and put it in here, and and it'll validate the copy, and you'll be good to go. Oh, and and it used to be back in the good old days again, where like they wouldn't just release one single level; they'd release almost half the game. Yeah, as a demo. Commander Keen, Duke Nukem had multiple levels of the original yeah. Duke Nukem's, not the 3D stuff you you younger or yeah you younger kids know. <laughs> I don't the, know uh, the that, 2D side scrollers. <laughs> yeah, but the, the the thing is, those 3D ones are up in age. Now. Yeah, Duke, Duke 3D was what late 90s. Mm-hmm. <sighs> those are the good. So it's just it's there you go, game companies. One, quit being the wrong type of greedy. Two, release more demos. And the the Ubisoft article will feed into that, but I'll read this last bullet. Uh, okay. Hawaii also proposed a bill against the sale of games containing loot crate purchases to people under 21. Did I read that right? Yeah, yeah. against the sale to people under 21. So consenting adults that understand, uh, even though that really hasn't stopped anybody from buying Grand Theft Auto for their kids and, and crap like that. Which which sucks because the ESRB does a specific service, and most of the time when the complaints come in about, oh my god, I can't believe my kid's playing a game where they're killing random people and chasing after hookers, it's like, it says it on the box. You're the adult who paid for it. When your kid wanted to get it at the store, they said, I, I need your driver's license. It's verifying that you're over the age of 21 and cons- a consenting adult. Unless you look old that. like us. Yeah, then I never get ID'd anymore. I never get. I I used to not get ID'd even at sixteen because I had full beards. But um, so with that one, I don't. Here's the thing: that this isn't like buying cigarettes or a beer or something, you know. Yeah. For, for uh, uh, say, uh, I mean, we see it all the time, even now. Like you said, not just with people buying GTA games for their kids, and it massively says, hey, by the way, you know it has all this stuff in here, and it says on like the front and the back. Right. And some of them even will go so far and put another header on there, absolutely not for kids. Right. What they're doing is they're just buying this game for the kid, and the kid already has the credit card information in the system, and they're just hitting the button. They're hitting the button. And... I mean, no secondary. Now, I do like how the Switch does, or Nintendo does it. It's like you need like tw- cases. You got to put in like the card number, and then you got to have a password and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That way, you can lock it behind something. But a lot of these things, um, they just say, "Okay, well, if you put it in and you're cool with it, just hit OK." I've gotten used to as being an adult not leaving the credit card in there, so I have mm-hmm. to type it in every time because, 
well, kids do what they do. I mean, we had a cell phone that one of the kids racked up a bill on, so because he was able to just buy apps because the it was an early Windows phone and it didn't have parental protection on it. So mm -hmm. we learned from our mistake and quickly fixed that. But regardless, you know, uh, it, it was he was like three or four or something like that. Yeah. So he didn't know any better. Uh, all right. Uh, I mean, and, and, and yeah, in these aspects, I'm sorry. I no, know I'm fine. dragging this on, but in these aspects, I can't blame the kid. Yeah. Because it, it makes it too easy. It's just saying, okay, press this button, then press this button, then press this button. There. You just spent 500 of mommy and daddy's dollars. That World they Bank. They totally didn't need that to keep you alive with food. That World Bank executive's kid that spent, spent thousands. Oh. <laughs> that was great. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, uh, last thing we got here before we get out of here. Uh, Ubisoft is working towards releasing less games each year. Uh, this is a big step by a big company to move towards higher quality games. This is the kind of thing we're talking about, okay? If they if they execute it right, it comes with an if. I'm not going to give it to them right off the bat, okay? Uh, released Monday, Chairman and CEO Yves Gilmont, Gilmont uh, introductory message with the annual report stated that in the future... The publisher would be moving towards a business model that was less dependent on constant releases of new titles and more focused on building and maintaining communities surrounding the titles they do release. Uh, the reasoning behind this shift is that the publisher is able to profit more off of titles that maintain active communities in the second year of release than titles that do not maintain active communities. Holy sh... Hold, wait, wait. They're realizing that if they make... Quality. Games that the fan base wants to play, quality ones. Yeah, that they'll stick around longer. So one example mentioned by Gilmont was in uh, uh, Gilmont's message was Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, which I am a huge fan of. Have been playing since December of fifteen, um, which was recent was recently reported to have an active user base around twenty five million players. Be uh, despite being having been released December of 2015. The reason so many comp uh, players have continued to play the title and thus influence others to pick up the game too is that the support the game has received over the past two years in the form of updates, events, and new content. Uh, it's a, it's, it's a, a version of this last line here. It's a strong adoption of the games as a service model in a world where Warcraft exists and has had constant releases of new titles every two years to expand on the game, a game like Rainbow Six is capable of doing this in the fact that they're releasing new maps and new characters every, what is it, a cycle of every three months or so? Something like that. At least one new map, sometimes two. Uh, the mid-season reinforcements sometimes throws in another map, especially during the end of the year. Uh, the new characters are locked behind a continue to play until you gain 25,000 credits and then you can unlock them. Mm -hmm. You can pay to unlock them too, but you don't have to. And I haven't. The whole time I've owned the game, I have never bought a character with money. I have not spent a dime on that game because I got that game with my video card. I have just spent zero dollars on that game. Uh, I just lied. I spent a dollar seventy-five on a ruby weapon skin because <laughs> it looked really cool, and it was early in when they were when they were developing the skins for the weapons. Now you can just unlock those with the credits you earn while you're playing. I still have six characters I haven't unlocked, and I have probably seven or eight hundred hours in that game now. I've spent that much time in a game like that. Uh, they, the community is great. Uh, most of the time it's not as toxic as it usually is. Most of the time you get good games after it. Other times you get pub stomped by people that should be playing ranked instead of messing with people that just want to play the game and enjoy. And then they make fun of people that are, you know, that don't have three or four thousand hours worth of time in the game. Uh, but otherwise it's a, it's a good community. The Reddit community isn't isn't terrible like everybody says a reddit community usually is uh there's lots of artwork going around there's the little animated uh pixel gifs of the operators from each of the countries going around those things are really neat people are passionate about the game and they're playing it they're watching the tournaments when they show up on twitch which uh they're the reason why it's free this weekend is because the invitational is this weekend 
and the final announcements for the new characters that should be coming out here in the next uh, next week, maybe, or the week after. So, so more stuff. You know what would be kind of cool? We're getting a new mode, too. A three-person mm-hmm. squad against zombies. It's a short event. It's not going to last mm-hmm. forever. They're t- probably talking for the for the season, so three months. That mode's going to be there. It's not staying around, they said. It is going to rotate out, or they're going to do something different and just keep trying different things. And that's great. That means that they're trying to develop more for a product that I really like playing. That's keeping mm-hmm. me playing that game. It is the one game on my Ubisoft launcher that I have not uninstalled since I installed it in, in December of 2015. So, you know what this kind of reminds me of? What's that? Team Fortress 2. Uh, except Team Fortress 2 doesn't release new characters and doesn't really release new They don't new release new characters, often. but they release... They release... Well, they, no, they just announced one a few months ago. The uh, Jungle Madness one. Oh, they okay. release one. They don't do it as often as what it sounds like the yeah. Number 6 does. But it's... I mean, it's a... You know, keep... you Stay interactive with your fan base in a positive way and they're going to respond in kind. Right, right. Regardless of if you do a game that you sustain over a course of several years or if you release one or two every now and then. You know? And they're and they're very similar. I mean Team Fortress mm. two has the hats game. So they do they do the hats and they do new weapons. Weapons, yeah. Uh, and costume. I think they do costumes as well. I think they so. do dances, you know. They just do really ridiculous stuff because Team Fortress two is ridiculous. Well it's always a hundred percent off too, so Yeah, that's very true too. So uh, they, I but, mean and but yeah, mention that, that. I mean that they're ta- they're taking a cue from that, and that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. They have they have done so well with that, and I hope I've been playing. I told you I've been playing the division a lot lately. Mm-hmm. The game is beautiful. The engine is pretty damn near perfect. They need to just keep developing for it, and they haven't made any announcements for year three's DLCs yet. But they are intending on it, which means that they're going to continue to support the product, which is putting it in line with what Yves Jomont is saying. So that's that's a mm-hmm. good thing. And that makes me more excited because I really like that game. That game was like the perfect everything I wanted from a shooter-type game. I like playing Rainbow Six, but this gives me a different experience, especially playing with a group of friends, or I've been playing with my dad and my brother lately. That's been amazing because... You know, we're we're playing something together again. We haven't done that since playing WoW years ago uh, together. It, it's it's a great game that could be better if they keep putting time into it. And I hope this means that they're going to do that and put that effort into it. So that's all I have on that. And I think that's all we've got for the for this week, right? Well, I was just going to say that, I, like, Ugh. I'm so, I know, you always so have me. But I never. Uh, Ubisoft in general is that I mean is this a new isn't this the same CEO that was like oh well players don't play games anymore they don't play single player games is that EA I kind of blurred it that together. was EA that was EA was that EA okay because yeah. I was I could have sworn that Ubisoft had said stuff like that as well and that's why I was like oh well this is a sudden turnaround these you know? were the ones that we're gonna do we're gonna do a, a new Assassin's Creed every year and they pounded it into us like we're getting. Like we're getting Star Wars every year, and you know mm-hmm. what's happening with Star Wars? They're developing terrible content, and they're they are killing people with it because now they're hitting them in the face every year with it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you're absolutely right. The quality's going now. There's nothing wrong with producing a bunch of games every year, but you can't do the same freaking series every single year. If you have like five or six IPs, or even three or four, rotate those suckers out. Hey, a new Assassin's Creed this year, a new. Uh, Rainbow Six this year, just random examples of New Zelda well, the next year. You and know? you've got the you've got the two extremes too, which is yeah. amazing because we've got we've got what Zelda, Mario, and uh, possibly Metroid within a year's time. Uh, but mm-hmm. anyways, um, you've got the extremes of being released every year versus Bethesda, who takes too damn long to develop a freaking Fallout and and. Uh, Elder Scrolls? Uh, Elder Scrolls game every five years, rotating off every five years or so. That's a little bit long because now you're talking about depending on a title for ten years. Or is it like two to three? Whatever. Whatever it is. The cycle's a little too long. They could tighten theirs up a little. But, like, 
throw, sending out a, a game every year, or it's, sometimes every six months if you're freaking uh, Call of Duty. The and, and and yeah, and with the oh and and this again with the same IP, it's just it's impossible because you're gonna if especially if you have the same crew working there all the time, you're gonna just burn them out and they're gonna going care anymore. Don't worry, don't worry, Greg. Skyrim is coming to your phone real soon. <clears throat> Skyrim is coming to the uh, backs of your eyelids other, for when you sleep. <laughs> yeah, this is the other thing: is releasing the same game for every possible system out there. Yeah, oh, and then, but you know, Bethesda used to do it right where they were like, "Okay, well, here's a game. Do whatever you want to it." Yeah, and people just modded the crap out of it. And guess what? Bethesda didn't have to lift a finger to keep that. Uh, that fan base alive because they were sustaining themselves. Right. Throwing in My Little Pony and Thomas the Tank Engine and SpongeBob all random crap into oh. Bethesda games. And now they're trying to jump into and get greedy on the mods situation. Oh yeah. That's that's yeah, not uh, faring well either. They're gonna <laughs> they're gonna kill they're themselves. Gonna... The other thing that Ubisoft has been doing lately is the Rainbow Six community was up in arms because they announced a change to how the the additions were gonna be. Uh, with the cheapest being a fifteen dollar buy in addition to get into Rainbow Six Siege, but every single unlock costs twenty five thousand credits. So you get two guys, and you have to spend hours and hours playing those characters alone. Otherwise, it's basically forcing you into the microtransaction crap of buying the season pass or buying Rainbow Six credits. The so one community, step forward, two step the, back. the community outraged, and they yeah. changed it. And they are fixing it. They are actually changing how the additions are going to work. They know that, or they've listened. They said, we hear you. It takes. That's why I told when when Greg was looking at it, I said, don't buy the $15 version. I know it's a little bit cheaper on the Steam sale this week, but don't buy that edition. Spend the extra money so you're not killing yourself on playing. Which, he doesn't play as much anyways because he's too busy playing PUBG all the time. Um but but and and that's and that hurts his chances of getting another character if he had bought the fifteen dollar edition mm -hmm. for twenty five twenty five thousand credits. I have been trying to get twenty five thousand credits to get another character unlocked for quite some time because I keep buying other stuff. It kind of ruins it. But <laughs> um, yeah, PUBG. Yeah, in all caps, PUBG. All right, now I'm gonna end it. Okay, this is this is the end of the show now. That is all we have for you this week. Oh, wait. One more oh, thing. No, I'm just messing with you. Oh, man. I can't. I can't. I have to go to work in the morning. Uh, we need to play before that. All right. Uh, that's all we got for you this week. Thanks for listening. Those of you who joined us on the live stream, we greatly appreciate it. We got a good turnout on both Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, please leave us feedback on our show. Wherever you get it from, we'll greatly appreciate it. And don't forget to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash stasisgeek. You can contact us at ECG underscore podcast on Twitter. At least I hope you can. At our Facebook page, <laughs> www.facebook.com slash ECG podcast. Or our email address at ECG podcast at gmail.com. Also visit us at our web page, www.stasisgeek.com. That's S-T-A-S-I-S-G-E-E-K.com. Or post a comment on this video. And Jeremy will read it. And then I will say something ignorant about it. I don't read. I'm so glad I make you read all the addresses. Uh, we'll be back next week for the show. And immediately following this show, I'm going to drop the stream. We're going to take our restroom breaks. And then we're going to be back and we're going to stream uh, Sea of Thieves on this channel and on the YouTube channel. Uh, so yeah. I'll send out another additional uh, additional notice about that. So uh, you can just leave it here and, and we'll be back uh, shortly. Uh for those of you that won't join us until next week, stay geeky. Press the button. <laughs>